Welcome to the uh, second part of session one of the Gospel of the Kingdom of God Foundation class. And in this session, we're going to look at what, what does the word kingdom mean? So when we said in the previous session, or the previous part, uh, part, uh, part one of session one, what, what does, uh, that the gospel is the kingdom of God, it's really important to understand what the word kingdom itself means. And as part of that, um, it's, it's important to understand and remember that, that Greek and Hebrew words do not always translate exactly. And sometimes they can actually be pretty radically different and not have a good equivalent in, in English or, or whatever um, language you're reading the Bible in. The, um, the Bible, for, or for those who may not know, was written in several languages, ancient languages. Uh, the Hebrew Bible was written in a couple of different, uh, or the Old Testament was written in a couple of different languages. The New Testament, which we're largely dealing with, was written in Greek and in a, an ancient form of Greek. And so when you translate from one language into another, it's really challenging because there, um, you can have a, uh, a word in the original language that either is a little bit different than any word in the target language, the English, right, in this case, um, or it can have no equivalent whatsoever. There's actually a word that appears pretty commonly in the Greek New Testament. There is no English equivalent, and it is not translated into your English Bible. It doesn't really affect the meaning, uh, but it's there in the Greek, and it's not there in the English. There's no equivalent to it. Um, so there. So when we use the word kingdom, there's a problem with the word kingdom because what what the word that's getting translated in kingdom, what it originally meant predominantly doesn't mean what we mean by kingdom. So we need to learn what that word is and what it means and then see how it's applying when, when we see it appear with all these verses that talk about the kingdom of God. So the Greek word for kingdom is the Greek word basileia. There you can see the, the Greek version and I've spelled it out in English lettering, basileia. And it it has the following meanings according to the BDAG lexicon. Now, I've given you a shortened version of this. If you want to go look up the, the BDAG lexicon entry on Basilea, you'll find a lot more detail. Um, there's a lot of detail there that's, um, that's probably going to be pretty difficult to read. Um, but, uh, but this is the, the two primary, the, the primary definition and a secondary definition of the word. So, the first thing that they say about it is this is a term relating to royal administration. So overall, that's what this term is talking about, is royal administration. First, and this is the primary definition, this is the primary definition used in most places in the New Testament when this word appears. It is the act of ruling, kingship, royal power, royal rule. And look at how different that is. When we use the word kingdom, we don't mean any of that, right? We, we mean a place. So like uh, the kingdom of Brunei or the kingdom of Saudi Arabia or the United Kingdom. When we use the word kingdom, we mean a place, a country, a, a, a territory or a country that's ruled by a king. And that, you know, that's what we mean by that. But the first and primary definition in Greek doesn't mean that at all. It means the royal administration, the act of ruling, the kingship, the power of the king, the rulership of the king. The second definition is the territory ruled by a king or a kingdom, which is similar to the way we would use it, although it still has these overtones of that first definition. And it's more like the second definition is sort of a... Um, like a, a, a metaphorical usage of that, to, or a figurative usage rather of that, uh, um, that when taking the rulership of the king as it applies to a particular area. And so, and there are definitely examples, we'll look at some of them, uh, where in the New Testament it is being used that way, which is more like our word kingdom. So here's some clear examples of 
uh, the kingdom of God not referring to a place, right? So the, not, not unlike our word. So the first is, but if I cast out the demons by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Matthew 12, 28. Well, clearly that's, that is definitely not talking about a place, right? This is talking about the action, the rulership of the king, right? So in other words, Jesus is the king. He's shown up. He's casting out these demons. So what is he saying? The kingdom of God has come upon you. He's talking about the rulership. He's demonstrating his, his rulership and his authority uh, within the rulership and reign of God. Mark 4, 26, and he was saying, the kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the soil. So here we have a parable, and it's talking about the gospel. It's talking about the gospel going out in preaching and being given to uh, people to hear and to hopefully uh, obey, right? And so it says the kingdom of God. Well, okay, this is definitely not talking about a place this is talking about an action. And so, okay, so if the kingdom of God is like a man cast seed upon soil, again, we want to think about that first definition, the reign, the authority, the rulership of the king. Oh, those things are like a man casting seed upon the soil. In other words, the gospel being preached is an activity of the royal rule of God. Romans chapter 14, verse 17 says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so it's definitely not talking about a place, right? So we go back to our primary definition and understand it as the, the administration of the rule of God, the, the reign of the rule of God is not an eating and drinking, but the reign of God, the rulership of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Suddenly, that particular verse can make a whole heck of a lot more sense. For the kingdom of God uh, uh, is not in words, but in power. 1 Corinthians 4.20. Okay, so wait a minute. So he's saying it's not in words, which wouldn't even make any sense if it were talking about a place, but in power. So, well, that's not a place. But it is in terms of the reign and authority and rulership of God. So, in other words, what, what he's saying here is that with the kingdom of God comes the power of God. But how, how's that power? That power is in the reign and rulership of God. So, in other words, God is bringing his rulership in and demonstrating it through his power. Okay, so let's do a, a quick review of part two. We learned that the word basileia, that is translated kingdom, primarily means the rule and reign of a king. That's its primary usage. And then we saw that the kingdom of God um, that itself primarily means the rule and reign of God. Right? So if, if kingdom means rule and reign of the king, kingdom of God means rule and reign of God. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick up the next part, part three of session three next, or session one next.